Hi, I'm Jeff Yager. I'm a professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics at Arizona State University. This video is going to overview a paper that uh, we've recently got published at the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, U.S., for some work we've been doing at Arizona State University in the Magnetic Resonance Research Center on spider silk. And so, specifically, it's looking at um, one of the significant um, problems in spider silk is, uh, is really biomimicry, is, is trying to mimic what spiders are able to do, which is, in summary, they're able to produce large protein proteins in uh, to glands in their abdomen and store those for long periods of time. And then at will, they're able to, with grabbing out of the uh, end of their abdomen with their leg, they're able to take that material, it goes through a series of ductwork and out spinnerets, they're able to grab the end of that and pull spider silk fibers out of that, you know, stored protein aqueous solution. And within milliseconds, what comes out the other end of that is an insoluble in water, uh, very thin, but yet very tough biopolymer fiber, usually only several microns, usually somewhere between one and five microns in thickness, uh, that is an ultra tough, ultra strong fiber that has been produced in a very environmentally friendly in, uh, way. So for us to be able to mimic uh, that would be a, a real achievement. And one of our problems has been understanding that the precursor to this spider silk, this protein solution that they store in their glands, what does it look like from a molecular level standpoint? And we've had several in the past controversial thoughts. One is how structure, you know, some evidence that these things are really highly structured to other evidence that they're completely random coil or completely non-structured protein elements. And are there other things going on? Are there other important molecules or, you know, specific ions or salts, et cetera, that are, that are critical in this, um, et cetera, you know, to really understand how they're able to store this concentrated protein solution that has this huge propensity to dehydrate and form these very strong insoluble fibers, but how are they able to store this and have it not you know, form these fibers while they're being stored in the gland material. And so that's what we were looking at from a molecular standpoint. And we did this, uh, and the primary initial evidence uh, started coming from nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR spectroscopy. And figure one uh, in this paper, uh, this Proceedings of the National Academy paper that's coming out in October of 2018, um, First, we show an MRI image of the abdomen of a spider, and that's what A is. And in this, we put a red box around one of the glands. Specifically, it's its major ampullate uh, gland where it stores uh, the two primary proteins, major ampullate spideroin one and two protein. And, and this is where it stores it, and it goes through a series of ductwork uh, out its spinneret to produce spider silk. So, and we're able to uh, look at this spatially with MRI, but using NMR, we can look at what's going on as far as its diffusion coefficient of the proteins in there, how fa what it's looking like, what its molecular dynamics is, as well as its molecular structure uh, in this. And one of the telltale signs that something is going on that's different than just free proteins in solution is when we were looking at its diffusion coefficient, it has this telltale sign of being a restricted diffusion problem. Uh, and so uh, that gave us concept that maybe something is going on at a hierarchical level that is causing certain restricted motion uh, associated with these proteins. So we teamed up with some experts in cryo-electron microscopy that were able to look at these both under kind of standard conditions as well as sheared conditions. Because when you start to pull this um, 
protein out of the gland material, it starts to dehydrate and shear as it goes through a lot of the ducting and out the spinnerets. And we can see very clearly in the cryo-EM uh, this hierarchical structure that's responsible for some of the restricted diffusion, et cetera, which is this toroidal or micellular type structure that forms from this protein. And even when we shear it, we can see that this toroidal, it starts to elongate and that the individual components that make up this toroidal or micellular nanoparticle structure, you know, starts to fibrilize or basically elongate in the direction of shear or the direction that you would be pulling the fiber. Um, and so this has allowed us to create at a molecular level um, a model for some of this, for this shearing behavior, how these things elongate, for what uh, you know, the subunits of these proteins look like when they're uh, in this toroidal or micellular structure. And, and this is one of the reasons that it's really now we're able to put some molecular insight into what's going on between some of these measurements. So this summarizes uh, the main figures out of the paper. And there's also a large supplemental component where we go through a lot of the detail, both our collaborators on the cryo-EM details as well as the NMR details that went into being able to create this uh, molecular picture of what's going on in the gland material. This really gets us one step closer to doing what we've always wanted to do with spider silk, which is the biomimicry of it. Or in other words, in the laboratory to be able to reproduce what a spider is able to do, which is to take a concentrated protein solution and within a very short amount of time be able to pull ultra tough, ultra strong, environmentally friendly polymers or fibers out of that material. Thanks for your interest in this and uh, you can follow up. We have a lot of uh, interesting research at ASU going on with biopolymers, spider silk, and the center of biomimicry. Uh, Thank you.